Second Panthers. No score. From their 37. Case pitches back to Arve Villa. Around the right side for maybe two. Irvin Briley on the tackle. He's the sophomore. It's in that defensive front. Only one senior, and that's the left end, Anthony Reese, who's all of 5'8", but at 205 pounds, he's a rascal. He'll be in there on a good many of the tackles this afternoon for Aldine. And Aldine has the advantage in the defensive line with their size. All their defensive linemen go at least 200 pounds and over. Steve Strahan is 6'2", 260, so they have the size advantage in the defensive line. Gain of one on the last play, second and nine, and they get a new pass. Near side, it's Lloyd Hill again. Deanne Cook on the coverage. Scott, that's the key to containing Lloyd Hill. You can't really stop him, but you contain him by keeping him in front of you, let him catch the short passes, and then attack him with the pursuit of the defense. Gain of five on the pass play. Brings up third and four now. Pitch back to Comer. And Comer's brought down. So Odessa Permian forced to punt Chris Allen right there, the man on the spot, the right defensive end. And so for the second time this afternoon, Odessa Permian forced to punt. Harrison Johnson, the deep men for Aldine. Steve Womack takes his time, gets off a much better punt than the first time around. <laughs> Living with danger right there. Harris. And the ball is down at the 35-yard line. That's where Aldine will take over when we return with a score. Aldine nothing. Permian nothing. We'll be right back after this message from your local station. Under head coach Bill Smith. And then we take a, a look at 1986. That's the only year in the decade of the 80s that they missed out on the playoffs here in the state of Texas. Let's get down to uh, our man of the sidelines on the Aldine side of the field. Greg? Most things have found a way to stay warm, not only standing in front of the large heaters here, but also through chemical preparations called oxytherm. You just break it, it generates heat, and they stick it in what appears to be a muffler, or what should most be all the Mustangs are wearing today, try and keep those hands warm and keep from fumbling and turning the ball over like they did earlier. Scott? All right, Greg, thank you much. 3.56 left. First quarter of play. Aldine with the ball just short of their own 35-yard line. Doug Womack. Engineers the near offense. Gives it to the second man through and nothing doing. Derek Johnson is hit immediately by Chad Williams. One of the defensive leaders for the Panthers. He hit him hard. 6'4", 240-pound senior. Hello, how do you do? Scott, you said it. He's one of their defensive leaders and watch the penetration he gets. He's definitely their biggest player. He goes 6'4", 239, and he makes a nice play there. That'll get the defense fired up. Second and 10, and was the case just moments ago, exactly just short of the 35-yard line. Womack again, this time he'll keep it up close to the 40-yard line. Jeff Garrett, the first man in. And you see the numbers on Doug Womack, very, very impressive. 25 touchdowns already this year. 1,700 plus yards for a quarterback on the ground. Very impressive. Third down, five to go. Womack again comes up short, picks up maybe two, but only to about the 38, where he's met by Todd Allen. Todd Allen is the youngster on the Permian Panthers team who plays not only right end, but started offensive guard as well offensively 5 9 179 but Scott again they're getting penetration 
excuse me, they're getting penetration there, and that's why they're able to, to stop that uh, run, stop Womack short of the first down. Gary Martins, let's go with a low line drive kick. Looks like it hit a player in the back. That's a free ball. It did. It looked to Scott, you were right on that play. It looked like it hit one of the Permian players in the back, and they got that roll. It hit the Odessa Permian player, and I didn't get the number right on the back, though. And Kevin Mannix was able to come up with the football. It's a big break. You see on the replay, you see it's a low, short punt, and those guys, the receiver, the punt return guy, have to let the other guys know that it is short. You see Mannix there. Excuse me, that's Hill hustling. Trying to get it there, but Mannix was able to come up with the fumble recovery. Ball hit Matt Pomeroy in the back. But Permian retains possession. And they take over first and ten. Stony Case to Lloyd Hill along the near sidelines. I got a feeling, Scott, they're trying to set up the Mustang defense by throwing these short passes to Hill. And I guess that's their game plan in the first quarter. You see it's just a short out, a quick out, but it is for a good gain for nine yards. And eventually they'll probably run that same pattern, but have Hill take it to the sideline and turn it up. Gain of nine on the play. Second and one. Comer, the single setback, gets the ball. I don't know if he got the first down or not. He was hit hard again. The middle linebacker, Cornelius Pierre. Boy, he got popped. And he's short of the first down, so it'll be third down now. Just short of the 35. Leon Comer, the double setbacks. He'll pass on third down. Oh, he gets popped right away, and I don't think he got it. Pass was completed. Stony Case to Lloyd Hill, but Gary Martins right there to make the stop. It is enough. I'm sorry, I got the uh, the yard lines mixed up. I was looking at the 35 and the 40. We're, uh, we're not at midfield. I might <laughs> explain that here. We're down at one end of the field here, so... Uh, the peripheral vision and what have you is a little tough to see from the vantage point where we happen to be in this particular press box this afternoon. First and ten with a minute left. First quarter of play. No score. On about the 38-yard line. Odessa Permian in the black and white. Mojo as they've come to be known over the years. Homer again around the right side across the 40-yard line. Today's game is being carried on radio statewide by the Diamond Shamrock Oil Company. Diamond Shamrock has carried the 4A and 5A football playoffs since 1966, close to a quarter of a century. Some of the fans on hand, oddly enough, in this chilly cold weather with a wind chill of about minus 25 degrees, it's amazing how people support high school football in the state of Texas. Second and seven. Hill again, the receiver. Trying to fight his way to a first down, get it to the 50. And we've got a late hit, I do believe. I think it's going to be on Chris Dixon, number 20. We'll wait and see and unsort it, see what the officials come up with. But he was already out of bounds, and it looked as though Dixon came in a little late. Personal foul. Indeed, against Alding. Here's another look at it. See the catch there, Scott. They're going to the Hill. They're going short. They're very, very controlled type passing game. And again, what that is designed to do is to keep the Alding Mustang offense off the football field. You see the personal foul penalty. That'll tack on 15 more yards on that pass play. That's a costly one. First penalty of the afternoon against Alding. But a costly one indeed. Takes the ball inside the 40-yard line of Aldi. Odessa Permian, first and ten from that point. Leah in motion. 
The give is to Comer. Up to the middle for about seven or eight yards, close to the 30-yard line. Reggie Davis on the tackle. That's the end of the first quarter of play. No score between Odessa Permian and Olney of Northeastern. We'll be right back after this message from your local station. First quarter stats obviously in favor of Odessa Permian as far as first downs, but then take a look at total yards, just about even. Second and three, they pass again. Kind of skipped in there, incomplete pass. So that'll bring up a fourth down situation. Carl Heathman on the coverage. He's the six foot junior, strong safety. We thought that was a third down. This is third down here now with three to go. That was a second and three. This is the third and three, and it looks like he's got it in then some. Fulmer, the leading rusher this year for Odessa Permian. Turns the trick and picks up a big first down indeed inside the 20-yard line. Scott, watch this hole up the middle, led by David Connor to center, Todd Allen and Todd Crump, the two guards. And when you give Comer that type of room, he'll gain some yardage as he does right there. Good enough for the first down. You see Comer's first uh, quarter stats or first half stats so far. Comer with 133 yards and a touchdown last week in the semifinal against previously unbeaten Converse Judson. First and 10 from the 19. Comer again inside the 15 and up to about the 11 yard line. And the partisan crowd from West Texas on the near sideline on their feet. Scott, this is Mojo football. You see here, they're just taking it down, taking it right to the Aldean Mustangs. And again, a nice job up front by the Permian Panthers front line, offensive line. Second and three, the ball is spotted at about the 12-yard line. Stoney Case takes a look around. Goes under center. This time he'll pass, takes a look. He's got some running room on the left side, still looking for a receiver. Goes back the other way. He had Comer on the near side, and we've got a flag in the play. Comer was wide open here on the near side after everybody had followed Stoney Case to the left side. Initial call could be ineligible man downfield. As we take a look at Gary Gaines, who was a member of the Odessa Permian team as an assistant coach back in 1980 when they won here at Texas Stadium, but now in his fourth year as the head coach and his first ever in the championship final. Don't forget for all fans of today's 5A championship game who might be watching today, TVG Sports is making available your own VHS copy of today's ball game. Call toll-free 1-800-933-1-TVG. Once again, that's 1-800-933-1-TVG and order your copy of today's broadcast. Second and eight now. Mia in motion. He's going to pass. He's got it. Span. Oh, oh. Lloyd Hill. I thought he had enough on the ball. I thought it was going to clear the two defenders. Martins. Dixon back there as well as Heathman. Carl Heathman, number six on your screen. But it come up a little short. And so it'll be third down and eight to go now for Permian. Scott, that time Stoney Case just threw it up, hoping that his All-America receiver could make a play on it. But he just kind of floats it up there. He gets the time to throw the football, but he just kind of floats it up there. And a uh, nice play by Gary Martins from the Mustangs of Aldean. Third down, eight to go from the 12. Mia again in motion. Gets it off. It's caught. And it's complete. First and goal, Odessa Permian. Scott, you got to wonder how could this Lloyd Hill keep getting open? It's just amazing. 
Case is looking for him all the way, and he throws it out. And watch his job on the sidelines. Excellent, excellent catch. Lloyd Hill is really showing me something. In high school, all you need is one foot. That time, Lloyd Hill looked like he had both feet inbounds, but makes just a super catch. It really did. It really did. It looked as though both were in, but as Drew said, all you have to do is have one foot inbounds in high school football, and it's complete. 10.33 left in the first half of play. We're coming to you live from Texas Stadium, and we're going to take a brief timeout. Mustangs and Panthers, scoreless ball game thus far, but when we come back, it'll be first and goal for Odessa. We'll be right back. It's here, now on video cassette. Batman. Call toll-free and we'll send this Batman video to your door for just $19.99 plus shipping and handling. What are you? I'm Batman. video cassette for just $19.99. Call now and this Batman pin is yours free. Texas Stadium. We'll also check with Skip and Greg in the field. We'll feature some great halftime shows from the Odessa and Aldine bands. We'll interview Dr. Bailey Marshall from the University Interscholastic League. And the interview we've both been waiting for, and I speak of Drew and I, and I'm hopefully all the listeners out there today, all the viewers, former Detroit Lion Doug English. We'll find out what Doug's been up to these past few years, and Pepsi's player of the past. That's all coming up today at halftime. First and seven as we come to you live from Texas Stadium. Odessa Permian. Threatening to score the first touchdown of the afternoon. Pitch back to Comer around the left side. Brought down by Cornelius Pierre, but not before he gets inside the five-yard line. Scott, when they get in this territory, you can expect Chris Comer to have the ball in his hands. He's the, the touchdown maker in this area. He's had scored 20 touchdowns already this year. But a lot of times, uh, their quarterback, uh, Stoney Case, would like to take it in. So... But the man to watch in this situation is Chris Homer. Second and goal from the four. Double setbacks, Via and Comer. Via in motion. We're on the far side of the field at the other end of the field, so it's tough to see. We see no indication that there's a touchdown. It looks as though it's on about the one foot line. Indeed it is. It's right on the one-foot line, so it'll be third down from that point. And again, Chris Comer handling the football. Looks like he's in, but the ball does not break the plane. That's why it was on the one-foot line. Does Case keep it, or does he give it to Comer or Villa? That's used to sneak, no. He goes to Comer. Comer or Villa, I couldn't tell if it was 35 or 45 from this point. Still no indication that anybody's in for the score. Fourth down coming up. Boy, what a play by the Aldine Mustangs defensive line in that situation, stopping Comer from getting into the end zone, creating this fourth and one situation. So they'll give it everything they've got. They'll go for it. Fourth and goal from the one-foot line. The give is the cover. Touchdown. Permian. Extra point from Clint Stewart is up and good. So with 8.33 to be played in the second quarter, Odessa Permian has taken the lead. 
seven nothing. And again, Chris Comer, the touchdown man, takes it right over the top. He only needed a foot on the play. He dives in the end zone to take the get the mojo to lead. Great, great job by the offensive line controlling the Mustangs' bigger offensive line, and Comer takes it right over the top with a touchdown. With the score, Permian seven, Aldi nothing. We'll be right back after this message from your local station. As we come to you live, the state 5A championship game this afternoon between Aldi and Odessa Permian. About to score here. This is the replay from moments ago. Nice block up front by David Connor, the center for the Permian Panthers and Comer, their touchdown maker, scores his 21st touchdown of the season right over top. 15 plays, 79 yards, and the key drew 5 minutes and 29 seconds, almost five and a half minutes, and that was one of the things that they wanted to do was control the football. Well, that's a good point, Scott, because Odessa Permian at this point has held the ball for 12 minutes compared to all these 3 minutes and 18 seconds, so they're doing exactly what they wanted to do coming in. At this stage of the ball game, I think it's a rather unique. I think back to a sign that was in the Permian Fieldhouse earlier this week, most apropos today, fight him until hell freezes over then fight him on the ice <laughs> and with the cold weather here at texas stadium today that certainly fits let's pause five seconds for our local stations to identify themselves this is tvg sports malcolm hamilton will kick off for odessa permian and the deep backs will be number seven Deion cook and number 21 sf harris that's Cook, fumbles the football, picks it up at about his own eight, tries to find some running room up the middle and come up, oh, maybe to about the 17-yard uh, line. Or Aldine will try and get untracked. Kevin Mannix on the stop. Offensive plays. Drew alluded to the time of possession moments ago. Offensive plays, 27 to 8 in favor of Permian. Scott, what Aldine has to do is they have to keep within themselves, not try to do anything spectacular. They're only behind seven points. Just work their offense and execute their offense, and they should be in good shape. Don't expect them to pass a lot, even though they're down by seven. Derek Johnson with all kinds of running room around that right side. Robbie Minnelli on the stop for Permian. I allude to the fact of don't expect them to see it run a lot as we check the replay through. Scott, this is one thing that Gary Gaines, the coach of the Permian Panthers, was concerned about, the speed. You see the speed there by Derek Johnson just out running the defensive players from per Permian. So that's been a key. That's the key that they're concerned about, and it was effective at that point. First down at about the 33. Womack on the keeper, brought down by Chad Williams. We again allude to the fact that Aldine is a, is a run-oriented team out of that beer. The triple option with Johnson, Womack, and Hobson. All three averaging 7.3 yards per carry collectively as a group this year. But last week in their win over Converse Judson, they had 459 yards total offense. 454 of that was on the ground. All kinds of room. He could go. This is Johnson finally brought down by Lloyd Hill. thought he might have had the speed to break it away. Now, that's the fullback, Herman Hobson. You're right, Hobson. My apologies. Takes the first handoff. And this is why Hill plays defense. He makes a game-saving, a touchdown-saving tackle right there. And he's able to pull Hobson down. Looks like he got a little face mask. But the officials didn't see it. 29 yards in the play. Just short of the 35-yard line of Permian. First and 10. He better just jump on it. Odessa got the ball. Odessa Permian recovers the fumble. Todd Allen looked to be the first man in there to get the fumble recovery. Same problem, Scott. Case of the quarterback, Womack, Doug Womack, trying to do too much. You see him here. The play is dead. He's got nothing there. Just eat the ball. Go back to the huddle and regroup. You can see the aggressive pursuit by the Permian Panthers as Todd Allen falls on the fumble recovery. 
Todd Allen doubles up. Now he's back in there on the offensive side. Plays uh, offensive guard. He's a two-way player for Permian. First and ten from the 39 of Permian. They lead 7-0. 7 7.02 left. Second quarter of play. Stoney Case looking to pass to someone. Nobody home, and he comes up short, maybe gets back close to the original line of scrimmage before he's brought down by Irvin Browning. And we've got a flag on the play as well. Personal foul against number 44, Reggie Davis. And that's not at all the kind of thing that head coach Bill Smith is looking for. See, Stoney Casey's looking for Lloyd Hill on the play. But Hill is well covered in case he decides to run. They have him stop. And then a little extra activity going on from Reggie Davis. Six foot, 185 pound junior. So the penalty results in a big first down for Odessa Permian. They go inside. Aldean territory at the 46, first and 10. Stoney Case pitches back to Comer. Got some rumor on the left side, maybe a pickup of three or four. Odessa again will try to make this drive, looks like their last drive. Just hand that ball off to Comer, mix it up a little with Arve Villa. And maybe a pass once in a while to Lloyd Hill, but that's how they like to control the football, and it's been effective so far in the first half. Second and six. Rushing yards all day with a commanding lead, but they trail where it counts on the scoreboard. And certainly in time of possession. This has been Odessa's ball game. Odessa coming in thus far today. Homer again, trying to find something around the left side, across the 40, inside the 40 to about the 39 or 38, but that's about it. It'll be a third down. Anthony Reese on the stop for Aldean. Comer led the state in rushing just a year ago, back in 1988. Has gained over 1,400 yards coming into this afternoon's ball game. 6.4 average. He's already scored 20 times this year. As we check the third down conversions, three for five, 60%. For Permian at this point, third and two. In and out of the hands of the All-America Lloyd Hill. Gary Martin's on the coverage for Aldi. That was a tough drop that time. Let's let us know that Lloyd Hill is human. He dropped that one, and that, the catch there would have got the first down. But they better be careful throwing this pass. It looks like the Mustangs are ready for it. They're starting to play up a little closer. It might be time now for Hill to go deep. Steve Womack. From about his own 50 or thereabouts. He's got some time. It's a high, high punt. They're signaling fair catch, hoping it goes into the end zone, but this is going to take a permanent bounce. Going to stop at about the five yard line. Panthers lead the Mustangs. That's how we stand with 504 left in the first half. We'll be right back after this message from your local station. The very spirit of what you're seeing here, I think it is a great phenomenon of high school football. It can really bring a town together, and I'm trying to capture that and came to Odessa to do it. Because it's a permanent they like kind, of, kind of like Hoosiers. I hope kind of like Hoosiers. I hope it's as good and sells as many books, but I'm really trying to capture the spirit of sports and what it can mean to a community. And good luck on the book. Let's go back to Scott and Drew. All right, gentlemen, thank you much. While we were away, we had uh, a pickup of two yards, so it'll be second and eight now. Aldine, deep in their own territory, trying to get th something going here in the second quarter of play. They trail seven to nothing, but more importantly, have not hit the ball that much. And two costly fumbles have given Odessa Permian a seven nothing lead. There's another fumble. And it looks like Permian's got this one. That's three already here in the first half. And Permian knocking on the door with a first and goal. Chad Williams looks to be the man that recovered the fumble. I'm just sure of so a shot of Coach Smith on the sideline. This is exactly what he did not want to happen. The turnovers. 
When you run a veer offense, you have to you have some flaws in execution. It creates turnovers. So the key for Aldine is not have those flaws and to execute, and they haven't been doing that so far in the first half. Leaving the ball on the turf has hurt them. Three fumbles against Aldine has given the Panthers yet another opportunity. Comer. Inside the five-yard line, they'll mark it just short of the four. Chris Dixon on the stop for Aldine, but not before he picked up close to five yards. Second and four. Stoney Case brings him out of the huddle. Number 25 on your screen. What a fake. What a fake. Homer goes into the line. And Case keeps it and takes it in. What a dandy fake. when you have a back like Chris Comer forces the defense to tee on him and that time Stoney Case put it in his belly, took it out and ran in the end zone for his third touchdown of the season. Clint Stewart with that frozen foot and all. It's up and it's good. No! Yes, it is. It bounced off the crossbar. It looked as though it was going up and kind of shanked off at the last minute, hit the cross post and came back in. I would say things are going mojo way right I there. think you're right. <laughs> My goodness gracious, how can you ever kick barefooted on a day like this? 3.48 left in the first half of play. We stand 14-0. Odessa Permian has had the upper hand the better part of this ball game, and that is a result of three costly fumbles on the part of Odine. Aldi. Got one thing about Odessa, when they get a lead, and they're very stingy. They don't, they don't give up. When they get ahead, they just keep pouring it on and and keep executing and keep coming right at you. So it's going to be a tough task for the Mustangs to come back. You see, again, Case stick it in and pull it out. And he goes into the end zone untouched. Scoring drive for the Permian Panthers. They're second of the afternoon. Two plays, eight yards. Took all of 37 seconds. Case and the keeper with a four-yard touchdown run. And again, turnovers have been the difference this afternoon. Odessa Permian has capitalized a couple of times. It's resulted in 14 points. And that's where we stand with 3.48 left. Ball taken on about the 10-yard line up across the 20, just at about the 25. Deion Cook. And so, once again, the Aldean Mustangs will try and get something unleashed here offensively. Well, it's got the three fumbles. You see two of those fumble recoveries by Odessa had led to set, uh, touchdowns, total of 14 points, and that's where we stand in this game. 14-0 Odessa. First and 10 from the 25. Scott, we just have over three minutes left in a half, so what all Dean wants, wants to do is try to get something going here, try to get something on the board, make an effort to uh, move this football down the field and, and take advantage of the three minutes and some seconds that they have here in a, the half, go into halftime with some momentum. Second and five. Fumble again! And I think that all Dean has it this time. It looked as like Womack was going to hand it off to Derek Johnson or to Hobson, and Johnson went back and, and covered up. That time it looked like it was a case of Womack riding his fullback a little too long and then making the decision to pull it out. See, it doesn't look like Hobson was, was supposed to keep it or, or, or Womack wanted it back. At any rate, Derek Johnson, fortunately, was in the backfield there to cover up and get the fumble recovery. But not before they lost a few yards, so it'll be third and 13. And as we have said, this is not a passing team. Five yards all last week through the air. 
454 on the ground. It'll be interesting to see what they do here in their own end. Forced to pass. He drops back. He's got some time. He's got a man. Lloyd Hill, the All-America wide receiver, was out of bounds. He was defending on the play. He goes both ways. It was intended for Asa Harris. He's the team's leading receiver with 324 yards in the year. Not much, but as we said, they don't pass much. Lloyd Hill turns out to be the receiver on this play. He looks like the receiver. You see it from the reverse angle. He lays it up there, and look, watch this catch by Lloyd Hill. Unbelievable hands. You know, Scott, he's a two-way performer, but he prefers to play offense. Smart kid. But comes up just short of the 50 and now bounces around. Finally down by Aldi. Just inside the 50. And that's where Odessa Permian will take over yet again. It's been a tough day for that gentleman. Bill Smith. 15th year at Aldi. And missed the playoffs once in the 80s. That back in 1986. So he has had a very successful decade. But until last week, had never been to the semifinals. And, of course, as a result, had never been to today's final. His team trails with 2.03 left. First half, 14-0. Odessa Permian just inside the 50. First and 10. Case will pass. And he'll be brought down. Chris Allen on the tackle. The 6'1 junior plays that right end spot. Well, that's a big play also, Scott, for uh, the Mustangs because... With the time left, Odessa was trying to go get some more points, and that kind of takes them back in, knocks them back in their own territory and puts a little more pressure on them to try to score before the half. You see Chris Allen, watch him come. Tony Case feels the pressure, and he runs right into Chris Allen with his aggressive pursuit. Loss of 11 on the play with second and 21 they give to Comer. And he picks up maybe three. Pierre again on the stop. He's the middle linebacker. That play showed me that they were maybe a pure content to let this clock run out. Be satisfied to go win a 14-0 lead at halftime. Ironically enough, as we said, both these teams as successful, successful as any teams in the state of Texas during the course of the 1980s. But oddly enough, coincidentally enough, they both missed the playoffs in 1986. That was the only year that they were both out in Permian, even with a 7-2 and two record missed out that. And you see their record here at Texas Stadium. This is almost a home away from home for the Panthers. 6-4-2, and two, a winner here the last two weeks. Said their toughest game of the year was just two weeks ago against one of the top teams in the Metroplex in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, Arlington Lamar, coached by Eddie Peach. And they took a 10-0 lead. We speak of Lamar, and then Permian came back to win that ball game, 20 to 10. One eleven left. As the first half winds down, it'll be third and 19 when play resumes. Odessa Permian in the intimidating black and white as you check, check the third down conversions Permian an even 50% on the afternoon that's Villa in motion Case back to pass going down the left sideline <laughs> not there for Lloyd Hill he's a little upset about it double coverage and he still wanted to have a piece of it Chris Dixon Stoney Case thought he had his man as well well Scott, Scott he should be upset because he was wide open there but Stoney Case kind of floats the ball, and you can see on the reverse angle, the ball is kind of floating in there, and that gives the, the Mustang defenders time to converge on Lloyd Hill and break up the play. Steve Womack in the punt now. Will do so at about his own 28-yard line. It's a high kick, but only goes about 30 yards. Oh, and then takes a great bounce. Boy, I tell you, when you're hot, you're hot. All the way down to about the 16-yard line. Permian <laughs> casually puts the finger in the air. Hey, we're number one. We planned it that way all along. Well, they've certainly been number one here in the first half this afternoon. They have certainly controlled this ball game. 
Scott, you know, when we used to play in the stadium, when I used to play in the stadium back in the 70s with the Cowboys, we had a certain mystique. And we used to beat a lot of kids, get a lot of bounces to go our way, and uh, do that, have that type of thing in our favor. And I think this is the same mystique here for the Mojo. They seem to have everything going in their favor at this point in the game. First and 10, the pitch back. This is Derek Johnson. Got some room down that far sideline. Finally pushed out of bounds at about the 35 or 36. Lloyd Hill and Trent Hendrick on the coverage for Permian. Unofficially, that's only the fourth first down of the afternoon for Alding as we check the replay. Very impressed with Derek Johnson's speed. Watch this here. He outruns another defender. That's just speed and quickness as he takes it upfield. First and ten. Womack almost brought down. He gives it back to Johnson. He tries to bring it around the near side. Tries to turn it upfield. Only maybe four or five yard gain. Jeff Garrett flushing him out here on the near sideline. Good play by Derek Johnson to make something happen with that play and also to get out of bounds to stop the clock with 23 seconds. About a nine-yard average on four carries this afternoon for Derek Johnson. He's only a junior, so he'll be back next year. 5'10", 170 pounds, but that's that certainly not indicative of the great speed that that young man has. Second and eight. Womack, again, back to Johnson. Johnson tried to find some room and great coverage. Manning, Kevin Mannix and Jeff Garrett. Garrett would not allow him to turn up field. Number 79. Just was step for step with it. Scott, the way to control the veer or even stop the veer is to work your is to control the line of scrimmage and work along the line of scrimmage. Not be so concerned about penetrating across the line of scrimmage, but to work along the line of scrimmage. You know, Destin did a great job of working along the line of scrimmage that time. Third and 13. 17 seconds left here in the second quarter of play. Aldine trying to get something going here. Maybe one big play part of the half and nothing doing. Johnson again and Chad Williams right there to make the stop. Number 75. He's the stalwart of that defensive line. Close to 240 pounds. And six four. He's a senior. And his team's on top as we wrap up yet this first half in the state 5A championship game. Odessa Permian Panthers 14. Aldine Mustangs, nothing, and we take a championship. And the bragging rights for the next 12 months in high school football in the state of Texas. We've got another thing I think what's, what's showing here is Odessa Permian's experience in this playoff uh, state final situation. Uh, their experience by not fumbling the ball, not turning the football over, has been in their favor. And, of course, all the Mustangs are making their mistakes and showing that they are here for the first time. Maybe they can correct those things in the second half. Harrison Cook will be deep for Aldine. The Mustangs trying to overcome a 14-0 deficit. Malcolm Hamilton lets loose with a kickoff, and we're underway here in the second half. Ball is fielded on the four. 10, 15, across the 20. And Harris brought down just at the 20. And that's where Aldine will take over first and 10 as we commence with the second half here. Don't forget, Drew and I will be selecting the Most Valuable Player Award at the conclusion of today's 5A championship game. MVP sponsored by Pepsi-Cola, who will present the school with a $500 contribution to their general high school scholarship fund, as well as a plaque on the MVP's behalf following today's ball game. First and 10 from the 20. They give us to Hobson, and he's up close to another first down already on the first play from scrimmage, just short of the 30-yard line. Lloyd Hill, the outstanding All-American who goes both ways, strong safety, and also is the outstanding wide receiver for Odessa Permian on the stop. That's the execution. That's the execution they want to have this second half. And when they do execute, you see there, by the run by Herbert Hobson, they can't move the football. Ball spotted on the 29, fumble on the snap. Doug Womack pitching, picks it up, but not before he is uh, dropped for a loss of maybe a yard. Oh, 
Now they're going to give him a first down. That, <laughs> you figure that one out. That's, that's one past me, Drew. Well, he picked it up, and I guess uh, by the time where his momentum was stopped, yeah, that was forward down. progress, boy. That's a, that's a new one on me. That's a break that they might need in the second half. 11.06 left, third quarter, first and 10, just across the 30-yard line. Womack takes it, dumps it back to Derek Johnson. Johnson up to about the 39 before he's hit and brought down by Mannix and Hill again on the stop. Looks like Permian did a nice job, Scott, of uh, stretching this out, but Derek Johnson finds a little crease, and he creates that with a great, great move, then he uses speed and quickness to take it upfield for a nice game. Just across the 39. We'll call it second and one. From the eye. First man through. Option. First down and then some across midfield. Inside Odessa Permian territory. And again for the third time in a row, it's Lloyd Hill on the stop for the Panthers. The Mustangs are big up front and they can really create some holes. And with the quickness and speed with the backs that they have, the backs get into those holes very quickly. Before you know it, the Mustang runners are in the Permian secondary. This is the most consistent drive thus far in this ball game for Olding. First and 10 from the 50. Pitches back. It's a fumble. Another fumble. And it looks like Odessa Permian has it. Yes, they do. Garrett Johnson taking the pitch back from Womack. Couldn't put the handle on it. And Robbie Manelli. There to recover the fourth fumble of the afternoon. And just as we said, it looked like they might get something on track here in the second half. They cough it up for the first time on the day. They got to do when they get in a situation out on the corners. It looks like the quarterback again trying to do too much, make something happen. You see there, even if the pitch was successful, Hermione was there to defense it, so it wouldn't have been effective anyway. So just eat the ball, go down, re go back in the huddle and regroup. First and ten. Got some rumor on the left side. This is RV Villa. Up to about the 45. Cook and Davis on the stop. Boy, I tell you, that's got to take the wind right out of your sail. Well, I know they want to try to get RV Villa loose in the second half. He's averaging over nine yards per carry. They try to take some of that pressure off Chris Comer and their quarterback, Sony Case. 17 touchdowns in the year. One of three ball players in that backfield who have gained over a thousand yards. The quarterback Stoney Case, a thousand in the air. Comer and Via, a thousand on the ground. And of course Lloyd Hill, as we mentioned earlier in the first half, over a thousand in receptions this year. This is Comer, near sideline. First down, Odessa Permian. Chris Dixon on the stop. Got what we're wit witnessing is. Permian football, Mojo football, first hand. Recover a fumble, take advantage of your opponent's mistake, eat up the clock, work downfield by running the football, and Chris Comer knows how to do that very well. Sports legends poll, Tom Landry, a prohibitive favorite with a big lead right now, 62%. Earl Campbell, the former Heisman Trophy winner out of Texas, of course, spent some time with the Oilers in the NFL. He is now second. First and 10 is how we stand from the 33. In motion. That's Villa. Give it to Comer. Comer's got some room up the middle. 20 down to the 15-yard line. Cook and Martin's on the stop, but not before he picks up about 20 yards. Yeah, this is amazing because Mustang defensive line, everybody in the defensive line is over 200 pounds. The biggest man in Permian's offensive line is 192 pounds, but they're blowing those big guys right out. When you got a back like Chris Homer, you don't need to give him much room. He can run right up there with a small hole, but he's getting the big holes today. Not a soul from West Texas sitting in their seat right now. They're on their feet. First and 10 from the 16. Give us to Comer again. He's got some room up the middle, and he's inside the 10 up to the 5. It'll be first and goal. Gary Martin's on the stop. For the Aldi Mustang, but not before he's picked up yet another first down. Again, the domination of the offensive line by the Panthers. And Chris Comer showing why he's one of the top backs in the state and one of the major college re recruits in the state this year. Uh, 
just short of a first down by inches. So instead of being first and goal, it'll be second and a short one. The scoreboard, the books on the sideline, <laughs> those of us here in the booth had already knocked it off as a first down with first and goal, but they say he was just a hair short. So it's a second and a short one for Odessa Permian. Looking for their third score of the afternoon. They lead 14-0. 8-12 left, third quarter of play as we come to you live from Texas Stadium. Homer again. Out of bounds. And about the one, inside the one. Deion Cook. With the stop. Running to the left side again. Behind Ty Allen and Robbie Bentley. And Chris Comer. See how he gives that shoulder. Gives that de defensive back nothing to hit on that play. And they able to take it down to the one-yard line. First and goal from the one. It's Comer trying to find room, and I don't think he got it. Strahan and Briley on the stop. So the Panthers will try it again. Chris Comer again, the man they'd like to get the ball to in this situation. He's their touchdown maker. With nothing doing on that play. Let's see if they take it to Comer this time. And see if Tony Kate takes it around right in or left in. If he's going to do it like he did before, he's got to go up over the top. This time he goes around the end. No problem whatsoever. Chris Comer, touchdown or just a permit. Comer goes into the end zone on a very easy touchdown for him. That's his 26th, second touchdown of the year, second today. And again, you see the excellent blocking up front. The guys aren't big, they're not that strong, but they're quick and aggressive, and they make things happen, and they know what they're doing. That's why they're ahead. I really thought Aldine had a chance to make things happen here in the third quarter of play, maybe turn this thing around and pull it within seven, but with the Permian Panthers and their seven play, 47-yard scoring drive, they have taken a commanding 21-0 lead. And keep this in mind, Drew. Permian has not allowed a touchdown in the second half of their last two ball games. Both played here at Texas Stadium. In the quarterfinals and then in the semifinals. So their game against Lamar a couple of weeks ago. And in the game in the semifinals, allowing them to get into the championship game here this afternoon, just a week ago today. They are awfully tough in the closing half. Malcolm Hamilton. He will kick off for Odessa Permian. The deep men, Harris and Cook. Aldine has outscored their opponents 168 to 42 in the playoffs, but already 21 points have been scored by Odessa Permian. And we're just in the opening minute to play here in the third quarter. It's fielded by Gary Martin. Pitches back to Harris. And across to about the 25, 26 yard line. We're waiting to see how they stop it or mark it. It's stopped by Robbie Manelli. He was on the stop for Odessa Permian. And so for the second time here in the second half. Scott, they like to run this uh, reverse here in this situation. They're trying to keep up Odessa Permian's kickoff coverage team off balance. And they get a nice return out of it. Second time here in the second half. Holding with the ball offensively first and 10. Womack on the keeper, trying to fight his way up close to the 35, pick up of about eight. Kwiatkowski on the stop, a 5'11 junior. 
Well, you see the graphic there, Scott. The fumbles have definitely hurt the Aldean Mustangs. They fumbled seven times, but four have been recovered by Odessa, and three have led to touchdowns. Second and two, the gain of eight by Womack in the last play. Hobson, the ball carrier. Kratkowski again on the stop for Odessa. And they say it's enough, so it'll be first and ten. First down, Aldean. Let's pause five seconds now for our local stations to identify themselves. This is TVG Sports. First and ten from the 37. Hobson. Up close to the 40. Pick up of maybe three. Well, you say, what does uh, Aldean have to do to get back in this football game? They still have some, a lot of time left on the clock. What they really need to do is get on the scoreboard on this particular drive right here. Womack pitches out to Johnson. He's got some room. He cuts back in. He could go. He's got one man to beat. 20, 25, 10, 5. Touchdown. you were just saying <laughs> that they needed to score <laughs> on this particular drive <laughs> they don't need to throw the ball when they have offensive backs that can break them loose like that <laughs> richard elder will try to pull him within 14. it's up and it's good so for the first time this afternoon the old eight mustangs find themselves on the scoreboard and again we've got ourselves a ball game with Odessa on top, 21-7. Let's take a look at the replay. God, I can see why Derek Johnson has rushed for over 1,500 yards this year. And here he goes around in. He just, just give him a little room, and he has the excellent speed. You see Lloyd Hill rip on the play, and that means there's no deep safety to try to stop Derek Johnson. And once he gets in the open field, no one's going to bring him down. No one's going to catch him. He's in there for the, oh, for the touchdown. Just got in. Again, from the reverse angle, you see the execution on the play. Nice pitch by Womack. And this is all Derek Johnson from that point on. He just outruns everybody else. That's the big play offense. They do not like to throw the football. And the reason they don't is because they have big play back like Derek Johnson, and the amazing thing about him, he's a junior. He'll be back next year. 5.31 left to be played. Third quarter, Odessa Permian now leads Aldi Mustang 21 to 7. We'll be right back. Cornelius Pierre, number 38 in blue, the injured player. Apparently all right, though. He's up, but uh, gets the sack of Tony Cates. And so Odessa Permian is forced to punt. It'll be Steve Womack from just inside his own 49-yard line at about the 48. And it takes an Odessa Permian hop, and it's going to be inside the five again for the second time this afternoon. You got a fair catch that one. They had an opportunity to make a fair catch. By not doing it, it cost them. There's the injured player. Cornelio is Pierre, and it's He's unable to return. That will certainly hurt the Mustangs. He's the club's leading tackler this year. Did I hear him say scapula? Apparently it's a, a shoulder injury of some type. Don't forget, if you'd like a copy of today's ball game, 1-800-933-1-TVG. Give us a call right now. First and 10, Doug Womack, the quarterback on the keeper. Robbie Manoli and Kwiatkowski on the stop for Permian. Womack 
this season. Three 100-plus yard games, two 200-plus yard games, and earlier this season he had a 300-yard rushing game. Easy to understand why this year he's got close to uh, 2,000 yards rushing. This is Hobson, the fullback, who last week was the big star on the ground at 144 yards, seven-yard average just a week ago. But shut down somewhat this afternoon. Lloyd Hill on the stop, the two-way starter, the strong safety, and the All-America wide receiver split in as we take yet another look. Scott, this game is anything but over because of the ability of the backs and ability of all teams to execute their offense. And if they keep executing like that, they're still in the third quarter. There's still a lot of time. A lot of football will be played. First and 10. Womack on the keeper. Takes the pitch. The handoff.